Looking for a rigorous academic environment for your secondary school experience? Look no further than the Fransdale Institute. What kind of environment is Fransdale exactly? It's a learning environment. I study hard and get good grades. Collaborative environment. Will you help me, fellow student? Yes! Yes, I can! And a fun environment. Isn't it fun to hang out with friends? It is fun, and we are friends. But the best part of Fransdale's environment is its environment. No man is an island, but our campus sure is. Far from any kind of distraction, Fransdale is surrounded by water on all sides. Why would we want to leave? We have everything we want right here. Fransdale offers a variety of services for students. Medical services. And other services too. Now, you may be asking, what makes Fransdale so special? Well, here's our secret. A weekly aptitude test keeps students working hard. A student who scores high is a good student. Come on, it's almost time for the test. I'm dying to take it. Students like you want to be the best. At Fransdale, every student is the best. Ever wonder why the mascot is a unicorn? Our students are magical. They are special. They are one of a kind. Remember, it's an honor to wear the seal. Casey Watts, session number one. actually want you to feel welcome. I just want to remind you that that is where you are. The most prestigious secondary school in the country. Some may even say world. Our school is of the our school has students of the highest intellect and soon you're about to join their ranks. 
Now I know what you're thinking. That you were the best and brightest at your old school. That this is gonna be a walk in the park. But best and brightest will not cut it. You must be absolutely fucking radiant, or you will face the consequences. Now students, you may have noticed that the school's on an island. So you want to go home, want to sneak out, want to go to parties, want to go see mommy and daddy. Well, you're gonna have to swim. Want to try it? Good luck, be my guest. But I know you won't, because you know better, and you're smart. Fransdale only allows the best. You've heard of a magnetic school. Think of this as an electromagnetic school. <laughs> magnet school. Excuse me? You called it a magnetic school. It's called a magnet school. I guess you weren't one of those fucking radiant kids when you went here. Oh, how delightful. A comment. You must be Clark. Yup. Lovely to meet you. You're suspended. But school hasn't even started yet. Not for you, it hasn't. For your first week of your time here, you will not be a student. You will be a laborer. Only once you've learned how you be to behave will you earn your right to be a student. You're gonna have me work for the first week. <laughs> you can start by polishing your classmate's shoes. You're joking. <laughs> Though I am known as the faculty jokester, this is not one of my comedic moments. <laughs> okay, fine, whatever. Remove the seal. What? It is an honor to wear the seal. When you're not acting honorably, you cannot wear it, so remove it. Fine. Happy? <laughs> Always. Now, let me let you in on a little something. This seal is your everything. It is the blood that runs through your veins. It is your pride. It is your protection. So when you are not wearing it, you are not wearing anything. When you're not wearing it, you are naked. You are naked, Clark. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. That's just how it works here. If you're smart, you will do well. If you're a smart ass, you will not. Allow me to introduce myself. I am your head disciplinarian, Dean Larkin. You will be seeing a lot of me any single time you break a single rule in the student handbook. What handbook? Is someone speaking? Could have sworn I heard some. What handbook? We never got a handbook. And you never will. The student handbook is a holy test. Like the Bible. Wouldn't want you defiling it with your grubby feet. But Christians have Bibles. Even if they have grubby hands. <laughs> someone isn't acting very unicorn-like. And if you aren't a unicorn, then what are you? You. A worm! Very good, Miss Byers. So those are the only two options, unicorn and worm. Yes. <laughs> if you aren't a unicorn, then what are you, Clark? I'm a person. A person! No, you're a worm. But you have something worms do not have. Higher cognitive functioning? <laughs> Arms. 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 <laughs> We have to get rid of those. Are you going to cut off my arms? Mr. Stevens! Yes, sir! <laughs> this is Mr. Stevens. He works at the school, too. What does he do? Unclear, but he certainly does something. polish people's shoes, and this. What? No. I don't want you to be like this. I want you to be a unicorn like the rest of us. But clearly you've chosen not to. So I need you to work your way up. Go on. I can't. Figure something out. Have you ever done an Annie? Of course 
not. The malingerers are generally bad students trying to skip out on the test because they're afraid to see their scores. I keep my scores up. But if you do need something, just tell Nurse Jackie. Nurse Jackie? Like the TV show? Mm -hmm. Jackie Kennedy. Her name is Jackie Kennedy? <laughs> Why would her parents name her that? Well, she was born before either Nurse Jackie or the Kennedys were relevant. And when was that? Mm, judging by her senility, the beginning of time. <laughs> Wait, the only medical authority on campus is senile? Yeah. She, her hand shakes so much she can't even take a temperature. She shattered a mercury thermometer in a student's mouth once. The cuts got infected and he got mercury poisoning. She treated him for that as well. Oh my god, why do they keep her around? Well, she's so confused she doesn't trust her own diagnoses. If a student really was sick enough to be sent home, well, who would believe her? From what I understand, at Fransdale, you have to get a certain test score to be able to go home for break. But you're telling me you actually liked it here? I did. I liked the test at first. It was like a game. A game that I was good at, but could always get better. But eventually, games get stale. It was like an old arcade game with infinite levels. I could keep getting better and better, but eventually I realized nothing will change. Typically, the tests look like this. Congratulations, Casey! We're getting you a new roommate! I already have a roommate. I live with Katya. Casey, Katya doesn't live with you anymore. You know that. Oh, she's still there. You just can't see her. Fransdale has limited space in its dorms, Casey, and you have an extra bed. We therefore have no choice but to put another student with you. That's where Katya sleeps. That's her bed. Well, now it's Annie Byer's bed. Annie would move in with you so new friends though personnel can have her room. Where will Katya sleep? Katya can sleep just fine where she is. She's still in my room. Casey, I don't know what to tell you to convince you that Katya does not go to the school anymore. Oh, I know she doesn't go to the school, but she's still in my room. Well, could you kindly evict her? I've tried. She just won't go away. I take it you got along with Katya. Nope. You want to get lunch? No. But you haven't eaten all day. I'm fine. Aren't you hungry? No. But I haven't seen you eat all week. I'm sorry. Next time I eat, I'll make sure to notify you. I'm sorry. I just wanted to see if you... I can't. I'm studying. We've been studying all day. And it's a Saturday. The test isn't even administered yet until next week. I'm sorry. Do you not get it? Get what? Look, it's just we've been roommates for like a month now, and I haven't seen you outside of this room. I don't know, I thought maybe we should go get lunch and be friends. Friends? Oh my god, for someone who's so smart, you're really dumb. Look, I'm a junior. I know this place better than you do, and one thing's for certain. No one here is your friend. Everyone here is either better than you or worse than you. Those who are better than you are going to try and keep it that way. Those who are worse than you are going to claw their way up and drag you down even further. So either you really don't get it, or you're just the slimiest little freshman I've ever met. No, I... It's the first one. Well, let me tell you early. No one will be your friend. I will not be your friend. I'm not deluding myself. I know what you are. What am I? Smarter than me. What makes you say that? I heard about your score. The pretty 219 points. How did you hear about that? Word gets around. You're gonna have to do better than that to get out of here, though. 
But I was only one point away from the top. They moved it up. Annie told me earlier. Again? I thought this cute little innocent girl thing was just an act. A really good act. But that's just who you are. Let me tell you who I am. I am smart. I am determined. The Golden Crab Apple Award is coming up, and if I get shown up by a tiny little freshman like you, I swear! Just let me study! But at least you had Natalie, right? Yeah. Anything else? Oh, um, actually, that wasn't very helpful. Maybe you need help studying. That's not a genuine question, is it? <sighs> Arnold, stop. Since when does Little Miss Bluebow tell us what to do? She's just a freshman. The school's gonna be hard enough for her as is. You Don't think, make it harder. You think this place is bad for you, Watts? You almost passed the test. Well, maybe if you studied as hard as I did, you'd almost pass the test, too. I heard you got the highest score last week. Well, not the highest score. It's not fair! Just because you're smarter than the rest of us, you think you deserve a break more? I didn't say that. It's not fair! This place was built for people like you! Oh, people who work hard? It's not my fault that you're lazy. You know, maybe if you spend more time studying instead of picking on little freshmen, you'd be getting high scores, too. Hey! Congratulations! You've just won the Blue Ribbon Award for Dumbest Bitch! Catch you around, Watts. Don't mind, Arnold. Stay out of his way and you'll be fine. That's okay. I stay out of most people's way on principle. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Natalie? Nice to meet you. I'm Casey. How's your first week going? Oh, I'm so nervous. I've never been to a school like this before. You look nervous. You look like a lost little kid. <laughs> so funny, I'm not a little kid. I'm ten and a half. <laughs> You're ten uh, and a half? You got into the Fransdale Institute at ten years old? Well, my parents and I thought that I should be surrounded by students with the same academic prowess as me, so I skipped all of middle school and came straight here because this is a rigorous learning environment. <sighs> well, they got that right. But don't let the Catholic-looking uniforms fool you. This place is basically a military academy. Got that, Lieutenant Natalie? Aye, aye, Captain Casey. Come on, I'll show you around. Natalie seemed just like you. Kind, precocious. She was. That's how I ruined her. Good morning, Captain Casey. It's Lieutenant Natalie. How are you doing today? Great. That's great. Really great. Mm-hmm. Do you want to know why? Why? It's my birthday. I'm 11. Your birthday? I thought your birthday wasn't until December. It is December. December 17th. Will you two be quiet? I'm trying to study. Sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. It's okay. Look, my parents sent me a card. That's so sweet. My parents sent me a card on my birthday, too. Yeah, I wish my brother had signed it. I miss him so much. Fine. I guess I'll move. I'm sorry. I wish I had known. That's okay. Look, you want to know who got me a gift? Who? Arnold. Arnold? Why would he get you a birthday present? To thank me, I've been helping him with his test scores. He went from a 252 to a 289. Honestly, it's so amazing. He's oh, really smart. Oh, Natalie. You're sweet. Too sweet. What do you mean? People like Arnold are just trying to take advantage of you. You can't go around helping people at this place unless you're getting something out of it for yourself. 
You don't really mean that, do you? I mean, you don't just try and get something out of everyone you meet. That's just how it is here. I know it can be hard at first. You know, sometimes I feel like I just want to burn this whole place down, but this place gives you opportunities too. You're like me, Natalie. You're naturally talented. Maybe someday you'll be in line for an award too. But if you go around helping people who aren't as smart as you, well, that's not going to happen. You'll end up like Clark. What's wrong with Clark? Oh, nothing. He's a fine guy and all, but I wouldn't want to trade places with him, you know? He got suspended the first day he got here, and he's always getting punished for something. The point is, doing anything that's not improving your scores is a waste of time, and that includes helping people. But helping people's the only way I know how to make friends. <laughs> friends? You don't need friends here. Look at me. I don't have any friends, and I'm doing just fine. But aren't we friends? What kind of a question is that? You didn't answer. What did Arnold get you? Okay. He got me this. A pack of cigarettes? How? Where did he get these? Well, he brought them in before he came here. He has a whole sash. Usually, he makes people pay, but he said to give my first pack for free. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're not actually going to smoke these, are you? I mean, of course. It would be rude not to, wouldn't it? <laughs> you can't. Smoking is bad for you. You'll get addicted. Well, Arnold said they'd help me if I'm feeling stressed. Well, I'm feeling stressed, so... <sighs> Natalie, you don't need these. You're too young. And even if you weren't too young, it's not like you have time to foster an addictive habit. <laughs> <laughs> get studying, okay? Okay, there's something I don't get. Don't parents know what they're getting their kids into? Of course they do. Haven't you heard what people say about the grand sale in you? No. <clears throat> My brother is on track to be Supreme Court justice by the age of 25. <laughs> I heard about this dude who got admitted into Fransdale, and he got into all the Ivies. The admissions people had a fist fight over him. Why? My parents told me that. My parents told me that if I graduate from Fransdale, I can do literally whatever I want. I'll graduate college before I'm 18, and I'll go straight into nonprofit work. Maybe I'll win the Nobel Peace Prize. Probably not. But then I'll go straight into the Peace Corps, and then money, power. I heard the headmistress has the personal phone number of every single leader in the European Union. Really? Probably because they're all friends to alumni. I heard Brexit was the headmistress's idea. <laughs> I heard of at least five alumni who want a cup of God. What's that? A Peasley, a, Pul a Pulitzer, an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, a Tony, and a Nobel Prize! <laughs> I heard that once you're associated with Fransdale, you can commit a felony and get away with it. I heard that Larkin murdered someone, and Fransdale kept it under wraps for years. What? It's what I heard! I heard Obama applied and didn't get in. <laughs> yeah, everyone says that. <laughs> Bioplast once found the cure for cancer, and they're using it to drive treatment prices up. That's the kind of work I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> and is this actually true? It doesn't matter. We all believe it. That's what's really important. Hey, Clark! Who did Larkin kill? I'll tell you after class. <laughs> so, people actually liked it here, despite all the suffering. Of course not, but people were proud to be here. Fransdale students had a lot of school spirit. This is super normal. I don't know why you're acting weird about it. I don't know, I guess I just didn't see Fransdale as the type of school to have pep rallies. Well, all schools have pep rallies, especially Fransdale. They're all about school spirit. And have you ever been to a high school with more school spirit? I mean, I've never been to another high school. <laughs> Trust me, this is super normal. Come on, let's join the crowd. What? Crowd? <laughs> <laughs> um, where's Clark? Why do you care? Well, I don't know much about pep rallies, but aren't you supposed to sit with your friends? Your friends with Clark? I mean, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Why? Whoa!
Good afternoon, students! <laughs> How's everyone feeling today? Uh, That's what we like to hear! <laughs> now please, give us super friends their welcome to our very own Head Disciplinarian! announce the highest and the lowest score. Are they allowed to do that? But they can do whatever they want. As per tradition, the lowest score is the jewel bearer of Fransdale's mascot costume. And I believe we know who that is. Not all of us are naturally born unicorns. Some of us need a little extra push. So behold, our very own worm has blossomed into a beautiful unicorn! Worms don't blossom. Well, certainly this one hasn't. You know what to do, kids. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> you know, if I just had more time to study, then maybe I would be doing better instead of dressing up as a fucking unicorn. Or you could just work harder and be better. That's what I always say. Now, as abysmal as Clark's scores may have been, nauseous. They literally made me sick. I shit my pants just looking at them. <laughs> Smart, I wouldn't be here now, would I? But when you are here, you are still very nearly almost the worst. That's not shame! 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 shame. <laughs> now here's where things get really interesting. Just as there was a tie for the lowest score, we almost had a tie for the highest score. At coming in at just the best, but not quite, was caught. <laughs> The highest score was none other than fucking Casey, isn't it? No shit. Congratulations, Casey. Thanks. Celebrate now! <laughs> no <Marriage> jubilation. <laughs> it is but my honor to present the beloved, esteemed, beloved headmistress, headmistress. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why the mascot is a unicorn? No, of course not. Well, let me tell you. A unicorn is magical. Have you ever seen a unicorn sleep, eat, or bathe? Of course not! <laughs> Because a unicorn has no earthly desires. That's because unicorns aren't real. Unicorns are real at Fransdale. I see them right here in front of me. Those aren't unicorns, they're people. Your inability to understand a metaphor may have been why your test scores were so low. <laughs> Fransdale students have one need. The need for success. We could all learn a thing or two from Katya. When she felt pain, she took action. We are all about action here at Fransdale, because Fransdale students never cry. You know that burning sensation you get in your nose when you're about to cry, but you're holding it in? That's the sensation that drives a Fransdale student. <laughs> Crying is for the weak. And you're not weak, are you, students? Fransdale does not allow weak students, and you're all here, aren't you? Thank you. Great, speak up, mistress. Now, it's time for Legacy Student Eddie Byers to lead us in the Alma Mater song. Excuse 
me. Getting a lot smarter. 
so... You can stop if you want. I mean, we have a lot of work to do anyways. One more. I'm leaving. This is your party. So? This is your room! I don't care. I'll sleep in the courtyard or something. Just, I don't want to be here. for him. Yes, we've been seeing a lot of him lately, haven't we? So much. Arguably too much. Right? Cookies, headmistress? Of course. <laughs> Cookies, Larkin? Of course. Mm. Cookies, Casey? Um, no thank you. Mm. <laughs> I'm really rather not. Oh, oh Clark, I'm sorry. Clark, <laughs> these are fantastic. Mm. I'm so glad we upgraded you from bathroom duty. Mm. I can't wait to see what you'll whip up for the faculty gala next week. But my in-school suspension ends on Tuesday. Oh, there's no harm in keeping you a few... Sorry. <laughs> extra days now, is there? 
What are you gonna do about it? Call your parents? <laughs> it's just, my scores are so low. We know. They're abominable. Worse in your class. You disgust me. Scum of the earth. If I could just have more time to study, then maybe I wouldn't. Maybe you wouldn't be in this situation if you decided not to act up earlier. These cookies are horrendous. Have we considered hiring him? Not full time, of course, and without salary. <laughs> you must tell me what recipe you use. You use. I put in a secret ingredient. Mm. I like to think I'm an excellent chef. My wife tells me I make excellent rice. <laughs> <laughs> Cinnamon. No. Brown sugar. No. Eggs. Most cookies have eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I give up. What is it? My semen. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Clark? <laughs> My semen, it's in the cookies. <laughs> well, the jokes will not be tolerated, It's Clark. not a joke. I literally jerked off into the cookie dough. <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that? I think they know why. And do you know who, who I jerked off to? Your wife. <laughs> Clark? What are you doing here? 
I don't know. Casey, what am I doing here? You have rickets. <laughs> what are the odds that both of you have rickets? I caught it from her. <laughs> Is rickets contagious, Nurse? Is the rickets contagious, dearie? Oh, yes. <laughs> This is a good thing, and you're acting like you're not grateful. Do you know how much I would give for admin to blow me the way they do you? <laughs> Lion. Do you know how jealous people are? Do you know how jealous people are of you? But instead of spitting in your face, they're congratulating you. You think I don't know that? You think I don't know how much people hate me because of this? That's not what I no, mean. No, really, they hate me. Casey, that's not what I mean. Oh my god. Oh my god. They're gonna try to kill me. Casey, no one's trying to kill you. No, that's what they want you to think. They trick you, and then once you think you're safe, they... They throw you off the bell tower! Casey, no one was thrown off the bell tower. Admin loves you. They love you so much, they're parading you out to the rest of the world. Students love you. They love you so much, they're jealous of you. Then how do you explain this? Oh my god. Who's that from? You know who it's from. Sounds like you were suffering from serious paranoia. It wasn't paranoia. I was right. I'm still right. You still think people are trying to kill you because of your scores? No, I think people are trying to kill me because I'm destroying the school. Surely you must know that's unreasonable. After everything I've told you? After everything they've done to us and you don't believe me? Cruelty is one thing, Casey, but murder? Surely you don't think- I know. Casey, you've given me a lot to think about. This session is over. Don't you want to know how I know? I'll see you next session. Don't you want to know how I know? Assaulting another student. Refusing to wear the seal. Malingering. Not to mention poisoning the student body. She's a menace. A demon. I never liked her. You trusted her. I never trusted her from the beginning, but you, you treated her like a god. I did? You did. I did. Every problem this school has is because of Casey Watts. Write that down. She was our star student. We gave her an award, goddammit! Perhaps we could expel her. We can't expel her, you flaccid mackerel! <laughs> that would put a blemish on Fransdell's reputation. Forty-seven years ago, I inherited this institution from my father. Back then, it was just a little schoolhouse built from his own two hands and a few underpaid laborers. But I, I turned this into the greatest secondary school in the world! Do you follow me, Larkin? Too well, headmistress. My father. <laughs> my father was a wise man. It was his core principles that the school was founded on. He knew how to teach. When I didn't know how to swim, he picked me up and threw me in the lake. And you learned how to swim. No. That wasn't actually me he threw in the lake. This was the child we hired to take all my punishments for me. Oh, yeah. What happened to the child? I don't know, but the point is, I learned that misery, inflicting misery on others, is how we learn to think. He was only trying to teach you how to swim, and he imparted such wisdom on you. <laughs> and guess what? I never learned to swim! But the point is, education and suffering are inextricably connected. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard that the saddest people are also the smartest people? No, I have not. <laughs> Larkin. Yes? 
Are you particularly happy with your life? Yes, I love my wife. Then shut up and leave the thinking to those of us who are miserable. Okay. <laughs> your only job is to make them sad. <laughs> Casey, doing whatever she is doing would mean that I would have failed. And I don't fail. I've never done so, and I don't intend to do so now. But what if failure is just a necessary part of growth? <laughs> <laughs> you almost had me there, Larkin. <laughs> you really are a jokester. I know. I'm hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but this is no laughing matter. Of course not. I, for one, was not laughing. <laughs> making a mockery of us. What if she goes out and tells the world lies about what goes on at this institution? Or worse, what if she tells them the truth? So, we can't expel her. And we can't let her stay. So what do we do? Kill her. <laughs> what? <laughs> we kill her. Oh, we'll do it cleanly, of course. I'm very get good at getting rid of people, you know. There's a reason I always keep a handgun in my pocket. You <laughs> I am fine with this. <laughs> first things first, we hire a psychiatrist. Really? That's the first thing? I thought you would have suggested an assassin, but... That Katya girl gave me an idea with that little stunt of hers, so I went ahead and hired someone to... Give Casey a little push in the right direction. Ah, oh, mistress, prepared as always. Ms. Marlowe! Hi, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with me today. You have a lovely office. Thank you. Who's that in the picture? My wife. All right, so let's get down to business, shall we? Do you have a history of working with minors? Yes, actually, I had a special focus in development. Oh, excellent, excellent. Oh, and then I see you are a doctor. Yes, I... Wait, you called me in for an interview, but you didn't know I was a doctor? <laughs> oh, well, when hiring a medical professional, a degree is always a plus. Mary, do you have any children? I don't see how that's my Hi, Mary. That's my wife. No children, though. Answer the question. No, I don't have a spouse or four children. Excellent, excellent. I see no need for further questions. You only asked me two questions. Oh, well. There's no need to deal with formalities when there's a crisis at hand. We have a very troubled young woman at our institution right now. You'd like me to start set holding session with her. Maybe I can help. <laughs> not at all. We'd like you to make her worse. So she kills herself. We're not really good at that, seeing as we are school administrators. We only have a rudimentary experience in torturing minors. You, though, you're a professional. Why would you ask me to do that? Dr. Marlowe, I have a story for you. One day, I was on a trip in the Arctic, polar bear hunting, when I came across a bit of unstable land, a thin layer of ice covering a crevice. I fell right in, and I was wearing furs costing more than both your kidneys put together, and I was not going to let those be water damaged, so I tried to climb my way out. Dr. Marlowe, do you know what happens when you try to climb your way out of a crevice? No, I, I don't. <laughs> you sink further in. The further in you sink, no, sorry, the more you climb out, the further in you sink. Do you understand my meaning? Never travel anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when you have a problem, you shouldn't try to fix it. You should let yourself sink deeper. Then how do you get out? You don't. <laughs> you sink deeper until you die of frostbite. I heard a death in the cold is actually quite calming. Your body goes on them and you feel no pain at all. Then how are you alive? <laughs> this wasn't actually me I'm talking about. This was Hugo, the man I hired to go on all my daring adventures for me. <laughs> I watched it all from my private plane. Oh, um, is he all right? Yes, but he's dead. <laughs> so, do you want the job? Um, no. No? <laughs> I'm not going to kill a child. I can't believe you would even ask you to do that. Good at it, Dr. Marlowe. Sit back down. Oh. Excuse me? I did a little research and, um, I heard about your last patient. 
a few sessions with you, and he decided to... How do you know about that? Here at Fransdale, we're all about knowing things. Besides, who would hire you? What with a dead little boy on your resume? No one knows about that. We can change that. We can change anything. Um, I'll, I'll think about it. When I get home tonight, I'll... Oh, nonsense! You'll stay here. Courtesy of Fransdale Institute. We've just had a dorm open up. Oh, an open dorm? Did somebody drop out? <laughs> <laughs> you could say that. Um, it's just, I didn't really plan... No, no, no. Mr. Stevens will escort you. You are dismissed, Dr. Marlowe. So, did you see any polar bears? Yes, they were delicious. <laughs> Don't you see why I started destroying the school? I had to kill them before they killed me. An academic environment. I haven't bathed, eaten, or slept in over a week. A collaborative environment. You are a bitch, and I hate you. You are a moron. And a fun environment. When Clark broke the rules, they literally made him eat garbage. <laughs> we can't leave. You want to be the best? At Fransdale, no student is ever the best. And that's why we hate ourselves. Unicorns have horns, and they can use them for impaling others. Unicorns come prepared to destroy anyone who gets in their way. Because you're only special if you're the only one. That's why we have the test, to see who's special. Tell us about the test, Katya. Remember, it's an honor to wear the seal. Casey Watts, session number two. With that said, it is my honor to present the most prestigious award that the most prestigious institution in the world has to offer to none other than Thank you. <laughs> May I go back to the infirmary now? I'm feeling very... 
very ill. What made you do that? Not wear the seal. I didn't want this war. I didn't want them to give it to me. I already knew how people felt about me. Sorry. It's fine. We can start studying whenever you're ready. Do you ever just feel angry? Like all the time? No. Oh. Do you? Yeah. At who? I don't know. Myself, mostly. Other people. Yeah, that doesn't happen to me. <laughs> I just get angry instead of sad. Um, but maybe I should try getting angry sometime, you know, just for some variation. <clears throat> don't. It, it's not that fun. Does it scare you? What? That I get so angry. Um, no, it doesn't. Well, does it make you not like me? No. Well, it makes other people not like me. That I'm stupid. They don't like me because they think I'm fucking stupid. You're not stupid. Well, I'm... I think people don't like you because you're mean to them. I'm mean to them because they treat me like I'm fucking stupid. Yes, it's a vicious cycle then. Everybody, line. Everyone's. Everyone here is just good at school. You know, everybody here is just so fucking, they're all so smart. You're smart too. No, I'm not. It's not true. I'm not good at it like that. Arnold, I know you're good at something. Sorry, just tell me what you're good at. Well, I mean, I, I guess I'm kind of good at... Um, good. At what? I write. What do you write? Oh, it, it doesn't matter. It's not worth anything here. Plus, I lost all of my journals my freshman year. It's just not... See? You are good at something. You really think so? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's not the same as everyone else, but it's just as important. And you're a little behind now, but you can catch up. You know, as Casey always says- Please don't talk to me about Casey, fucking blue bow bitch. That's a bad word. Yeah, it's a bad word. Why the fuck do you think I said it? I told you, I'm mean to people who treat me like I'm stupid. Casey's just doing her best. Why is her best so much better than mine? She's just working hard, and now you're working hard too, so, um, maybe I could try getting angry, and you could try being like Casey. Yeah. Sure. What did Natalie mean to be like you? Two shit like this! Okay. 
Casey, what are you doing? Looking for worms. Why? Because I need worms. Why? To put in Katya's bed. Why? Because she's always there. She's always studying there. I can't stand it. Sitting on that bed. How am I supposed to study there when she's there too? You could study on your bed. What's the point of me studying with her? She's studying with me. She's always working so hard. I can't keep up with her. I can't. She'll win the crab apple. I know it. I thought Annie was going to win the crab apple. I thought it was Annie too. But the way the Katya studies endlessly, when I wake up in the morning, she's studying. When I go to bed at night, she's studying. When I wake up in the middle of the night from stress nightmares, she's studying. I can't keep up with her. I can't. She will win. And when she does, how am I going to face her? How am I going to walk back in that room knowing that she's won? Won? Casey, it's not a game. It is a game. And I'm better, but I'm still losing. Casey, how do I deal with that? Casey, this needs to stop. Katya is not the enemy. Yes, she is. She's my competitor. No, the enemy is whoever makes you feel like you need to dig up worms. Yes, Katya. No. Larkin, the headmistress. Larkin and the headmistress love me. In fact, I have a meeting with them in an hour. The admin are here to be my friends. They are here to help me. Katya, on the other hand, what are those for? Uh, it doesn't matter. No, don't have a cookie. <laughs> if I offer you one later, do not take it. <laughs> okay. Admin ever get back to Clark for that whole incident? Oh, yes. Excellent work you've been doing, Miss Watts. Why, thank you, ma'am. I can't wait to see you on that stage accepting the most sought-after award. It is quite an honor, ma'am. So nice to see a little astute girl like you following my footsteps. I don't mention it often, but I created the Golden Crab Apple Award. I thought you said you were the recipient of the Crab Apple Award. <laughs> I'm multi-talented, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are so special. Larkin? Yes, ma'am? Go tell Avi and the rest of them to set up for tonight's feast. Of course. There's a feast tonight? Oh, yes. Larkin and I indulge ourselves with a lavish dinner. We thought tonight you might want to join us. Oh, wow, I'd love to, but why, if that's not too rude to ask? Casey, you're not like other students, so why should we treat you like one? I want to show you what life ahead of you has in store if you stay on the right track. I'm so sorry to hear that. Perhaps you should buy her. I did. Ah, uh, headmistress, you always have the best way to handle things. Yes. And you? I had a wonderful day. I caught some students smoking behind the fire building, so I thought I'd teach them the naughty way of what happens when you mess with fire. You burnt their fingertips? Toes, actually. <laughs> I thought I'd add some variation. You really add the pun and punishment. <laughs> you certainly are the best disciplinarian I've ever met. You should have seen what I've done with Arnold today. He was cutting the numbers out of his math book, so I thought it would be funny. The food smells wonderful. Yes, it does. Um, and how have you been, Casey? I'm wonderful. How are classes? Wonderful. And tests? Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> hey, Casey. What was that? Hey, Nothing. Hey, Casey. Um, I don't mean to be rude, but I think Clark might be under the table. <laughs> Nonsense! Clark is the table. What? <laughs> Clark is the table. I'm the table. <laughs> <laughs> you turned him into a table? <laughs> yes. You put a piece of plywood on everyone's back and they become a table. <laughs> We're eating off of Clark? Allow me to explain. Clark thought it would be funny to gradually add snorkels into Mr. Stephen's shoes until Mr. Stephen couldn't walk anymore. It was funny. It was.
was not. <laughs> you were dismissed. <laughs> so we decided to see how funny it would be if he forced a way for a change. That seems cruel. If that's not rude of me to say, actually, that is very rude of me to say. <laughs> it is cruel. That's what makes it so brilliant. Unfortunately, so many of our disciplinary tactics have not worked on Clark, so we've had to take more direct action. Oh, I thought it was bad when you had to wear the worm costume. I am the worm costume. Oh my god! Clark just needs to realize his actions have consequences. I would like to leave now. Nonsense! You haven't had the main course yet. Clark is just getting what he deserves. And you are getting what you deserve, gourmet bruschetta. I don't know, I just feel a little bit weird. I know you're hungry. Word on the street is you spent so long preparing for last test that you have eaten days. It still feels a little weird to be eating off of my friend. That's just the system. Clark knows that. Clark knows it so well, he'll be a good little table and not talk anymore. Isn't that right, Clark? Excellent, excellent. I can't eat off of my friend. Oh, Clark doesn't mind if you eat off him, do you, Clark? That's a no. <laughs> if Clark were more like you, he wouldn't be in this situation. So why don't you go and show Clark what it means to be a good Fransdale student? After all, if you don't want to be a part of this, we could always find another recipient for the gold. No, no, please don't. I'll do better. Then come, eat with us. Yes, ma'am. didn't want to put us to regular school, we moved around too much, so. When we moved to Rome for a big excavation project, they realized they didn't have room for both of us. One of us had to go. And that's why I'm here. I didn't know any of this. I don't really like to talk about it. I don't even like to think about it. I just try to focus on the test, but sometimes, sometimes I just want to see my mom and dad again. I just want to see my brother again. You know, I'm worried about him. I've been here long enough to know that, you know, we weren't raised in the real world. I get bullied, and I'm, I'm used to it, you know, but he's been sheltered. He's smart, but not like that. And. I'm worried about him. I, I know my parents are going to take good care of him, but sometimes they just get 
so wrapped up in their work. And you know, one time, one time, they didn't leave their study for four days. And so I had to do everything, you know, pay the bills, cook the meals. I'm just worried about them. God, I need a cigarette. Natalie, you can't keep smoking those. You know, they help me calm down, and sometimes I don't even smoke them. Sometimes I just like the end and watch it burn, or sometimes I just watch the flame. Or, you know, sometimes I just put my hand on the flame. You do what? Sometimes I like to see how long it'll take for me to move my hand away from the flame. Why? I don't know, I guess. I guess I just get so worked up about the test, and then I feel guilty about getting worked up over the test, and then I just, I just need to, you know, feel some real pain to take away from the pain in my head. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't hurt yourself on purpose. Why? Is it bad? Yes! No, no, it's not bad per se. But I thought it was normal. You know, I thought everyone did it. It doesn't matter if everyone else is doing it. If you want to hurt yourself, then that's a problem. But you hurt yourself all the time for the test. What do you mean? I mean, you don't sleep. You don't eat. Actually, you know, I've never seen you eat real food once. You know, so I stopped eating too. You did what? I mean, if you don't have time for it, then I don't have time for it. So, and I don't want to be a worse student than you, so. How I do on the test has nothing to do with how much I eat or sleep, Natalie. So why don't you? I don't know. Because it's what everyone else is doing? I guess, but that doesn't mean that... Look. We should stop. Both of us. If you stop doing that, then so will I. But what will I do instead? I don't know. I did what I could for her when I realized how I ruined her. It was Clark who first gave me the idea. Hey, Kipsy, I found something you might like to see. Yeah? So, I was cleaning the toilet. <sighs> to the point that this isn't an hour. I saw the door to the mail room, and I'd never been in there, and I saw this whole pile of outgoing mail, and I found your letter to your parents. What the hell, Clark? Why would you take my letter? My parents are my only Casey, here. read it. Fine. Dear Mom and Dad, I'm having an incredible time at school. I'm learning so much and being challenged in ways I didn't think possible. I appreciate your invite home for Christmas, but I don't think I'll be coming. I'm having so much fun. I don't think I ever want to come home again. Oh, God. They're just making stuff up. Who knows if the stuff we're receiving is even real? No, 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 that can't be true. I'm getting responses from my parents. Um, my parents, they just got a new puppy. So did mine. What a coincidence. Oh, Teddy. Teddy. Mm -hmm. Fuck. We have no contact with the outside world. So I did this. Hey, Natalie! Clark found something for you in the mailroom. Cool, what's that? It's a letter from your brother. My I must have forgotten to put it in your mailbox. My brother? Are you sure? That's what it says. Oh my god, I was worried you'd never write to me. Thank you, Casey. Don't thank me, thank Clark. He's the one who found it. Clark, thank you so much. Um, no problem. Why would you do that? I wanted to see her happy. But you lied to her. She may never see her brother again. Let her have this. That was very kind of you. It was the least I could do for her after I completely ruined her. I still don't understand why you think you ruined her. I taught her to value all the wrong things. But I learned, eventually. Come on, Casey, this is your duty. I don't give a shit about duty. This isn't about you, it's about the rest of us. You can't make me do something with my body that I don't want to. Casey, it's not that I care about you getting the flu. It's that if you don't get your flu shot, then you could get everyone else sick. Is everyone else getting their flu shot? 
Yes. Then there doesn't seem much point in me getting one now, does there? Come on, Casey. It's against the student handbook not to get your flu shot. Do you want the flu or something? Yes. Yes, I want the flu. What? I want the most disgusting, painful flu there has ever been. I want to be so sore, I can't get out of bed. I want my throat to be so red and swollen for a week. I want to be shitting uncontrollably. I want to vomit up everything that I try to eat, and then I want to die of dehydration. Ew. <laughs> I want this flu to permanently destroy my body. Why? Because then I don't have to take the test anymore. I don't understand. You and me and Katya, we used to be the best. We had the highest scores, and now you're like this, and Katya, well, you know, just take the shot. Please, Casey. But what happened? Why did you start to act like this a year ago? You haven't figured it out yet? of the test tomorrow, yes? I realize well, Mr. Stevens, sir. And you are still in the hospital. I can't help it if I'm sick, Mr. Stevens. Do you still have rickets? Nope. Now it's jaundice. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like you have jaundice. Well, I'm getting better. So you can take the test? Well, I'm getting much worse. <laughs> I don't suppose you've let this jaundice spread to the rest of your classmates, have you? Of course not, Mr. Stevens. Jaundice isn't contagious. Everyone knows that. It's not right, Nurse Jackie. That's right, dearie. <laughs> now can I account for the other missing students in class today? Dear God, is the entire top of the class here? I have a tumor. <laughs> Where? Everywhere. <laughs> oh, surely it can be removed. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Stevens. I might have to be removed from the tumor. <laughs> Well, Natalie, in that case, I suppose you should stay here and get your rest. Casey, on the other hand, needs to come with me. Why, why does she get to stay here and I don't? Well, the school hasn't given Natalie a prestigious award. We don't expect as much from Natalie. We just expect a lot, though, so let's come to with that tumor. But I have jaundice. <laughs> well, I think a tumor is a little more serious than jaundice. Don't you think so? I think so. But I have a tumor, too. I caught it from her. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, 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 she did, she caught the tumor. <laughs> you will take that test on Friday, Miss Watts. And your scores will be stellar. Changed my mind, I'm taking her with me. No. What? No, Casey, no. <laughs> Ah. I can't believe this. Just because you pretend you're sick, people automatically assume you're not sick. <laughs> this is ridiculous. You really are sick, dearie. No, I think I have jaundice now, not rickets anymore. Maybe. All right, I'll change your form. Why can't you just tell them that I'm crazy? Then maybe they'll let me stay here forever. Oh, well, they wouldn't believe me. So, 
Why do they let you keep me here? Oh, well, they wouldn't believe me if I say you're well either. <laughs> so why do they keep you around? Oh, I give people sweets and tell them, cheer up, dearie. Things will get better soon, just you wait. <laughs> Have you been to medical school? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what rickets is? No. <laughs> Do you really think that I'm sick? Oh, of course not. But you come in here telling me you have rickets? Well, who am I to say no? <laughs> are they... Are they keeping you here too? Mm-hmm. How? Why? Oh, well, well, I don't really remember. I don't even know if Nurse Jackie is my real name. <laughs> I'm never getting out of here. No. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, cheer up, dearie. Things will get better soon. Just you wait. whatsoever. But it will, because if no one else is trying, then my scores don't mean anything. Uh, I'm trying, so will you all please shut the fuck up? <laughs> I'm leaving. No, you are not. I'm sorry. You are going to go back to your spot, and you are going to finish your test. I don't want to. Nobody gives a shit what you want, Blue Bow. You heard Annie, if you walk out of this room, they throw out all the scores. I don't care. Yeah, of course you don't care, because you're the top of a fucking class, and you got a sparkly new award to prove it. Well, guess what? Hmm. Not all of us here are like you. I have been working my ass off to get the scores up, and this is the best I've done thus far. So? 
So I'm going to get out of here, and I'm not going to let you ruin this for me! Oh, I get it. You're so right. I'm smart, and you're dumb. You're dumb as shit. You're dumb as shit if you think anything you put on that piece of paper is going to convince them to let you out of here. You are dumb as shit. Take that back, Watts. Why the fuck would I? Now get out of my way, bitch face. No! Ooh. Oh, oh my God. Nice. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> I know you're not gonna have It's locked! What? It's locked! They lock us in here? Isn't that a fire hazard that's locked lock us in here? Of course we do. <laughs> Why haven't we been told about that? Well, no, 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 no. Get off of her! Hey! Whoa! It's a lovely day. It's raining. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> May I join you? I'd really rather if you didn't. <laughs> but I can. I guess. <laughs> His name was Nico. Who's name? Oh, well, I thought you were in on it. Nope. I'm never in on anything. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like me then? Maybe. I guess that depends what you're like. So how are they keeping you here? Keeping you here? You know, how do they threaten to punish you if you try to quit? They don't? So you could just leave? I guess. Never really tried before. You've never tried? Why would I want to? I love Franz Dale. Even when you see what it's doing to the kids? It's making them smart. God, I wish someone made me smart when I was little. But they hate it. Well, they're not smart yet, so they don't see how good it's gonna be. He had parents. <clears throat> That's the thing. Kids often do. <laughs> That's why it was so wrong that I... His parents didn't believe him when he said he had problems. That's why they hired me. To fix him. But, but I couldn't. No one could. That's nice. You know, you don't have to respond to everything I say. You can just listen. Okay. <laughs> I thought about going to child services more than once, but, but I didn't have the evidence. You need evidence for those sorts of things. Yes, you do. It's, it's weird. I would fantasize. I know that's a strange word to use, but I would fantasize about being his mom. Funny, I never even wanted kids until I found the kid that I wanted. But I couldn't do that. If I was his therapist, that would have been wrong. I just couldn't help but asking, what if? 
And I guess now, after all this time, I can't help but ask the same question. Do you ever do that, Mr. Stevens? Think about what might have been? You can answer. Nope. <laughs> I guess you're not like me then. Guess not. <laughs> Hey, uh, Dr. Marlowe. Yes? What happened to Nico? Ask the headmistress. She'd be more than happy to tell you. Casey, I should have known something was up when Natalie said we needed to study in the infirmary. Listen, the test is in like a couple minutes. We're not we... taking the test. None of us are. We're rebelling. I don't know what kind of crazy bullshit y'all are trying to pull and prove and pull, but like uh, some people are trying to graduate on time. Oh, and be stuck in this world forever? Uh, yeah. This world means success. This world means going places. I'll do it. You will? I mean, yeah. All of the problems that we've been blaming ourselves are the school's fault. You know how you're saying you're so angry all the time? What if we were angry at the school? Yeah, but it's not the school. It's all of you guys. Last I checked, admin wasn't the one going, shame, shame, shame. Oh, right. We're sorry. We didn't know any better. But we do now, right? So what, we're just going to stay in here through the test? Oh, we're going to do much more than that. You guys hate the school as much as I do, right? Don't you ever just want to get back at them? Yeah, but how? Well, first things first. Well, go on. You do it too. I'm not going to... Yeah, what's that? Now, I don't really know about much about this, but I want to give it a try. We're going to take care of ourselves. Oh. Uh. How do we do that? <laughs> uh, I don't really know. That's why Nurse Jackie's here. I made goodie bags! <laughs> I figured we could try a little bit of everything. It's kind of like a fancy cheese platter. But for like, drugs? Yes, I think we made it. I don't know if that's true. Hey, Nurse Jack. Hey, Nurse Jack. Do you have opium? Yes. Regularly. <laughs> See? Arnold getting into it. I guess I've always wanted to try it. NyQuil. <laughs> <laughs> Once everyone's medicated, it's time to start therapy. How does therapy work? I don't really know. But I think it's like where someone asks you to relive every single trauma you've had in your life up until the present moment. <laughs> But for the things that are the most upsetting to you. Oh, that's going to be really hard, because most things are upsetting to me. <laughs> well, I've decided to stay in the infirmary forever, so you have all the time you need. I 
had no idea that sad was contagious. Everything is contagious, Mr. Stevens. Oh, God! Do you think I might have rickets, too? We'll see. Now, why don't you sit with the children and eat your drugs? <laughs> How do we get better? We're doing therapy. Basically, it's where you talk about everything that's wrong in your life until one of us can't stand it anymore. Sounds great! It's not. We should go first. Eddie! Hey! Look, I didn't want to come here. I didn't want to break the rules, but campus was so empty, and the testing room, there was no one there, and so you made me come here. You Annie. made me come here. Annie, we're happy you're here. What? You're happy? Yeah. Oh. You want to talk about your, you want to talk about your feelings? Um, I've never done that before. It's all right, none of us have. Well, honestly, I, I feel pretty bad. I mean, yeah, we all do. Let her talk. It's just that... When, when Katya was around, I felt like I had a... But now that she's gone... Dead. Yeah. Katya's dead. But nothing. But nothing! It's not right that we never talk about her! It's not right that we never talk about what happened! She's dead. It's the truth. So we should say it out loud. But why? Because then maybe she'll stop living in my room! Hold on, you actually think you have a ghost living in your dorm room? No, not a ghost, just Katya. Well, I guess maybe Admin's right and you are crazy. Yep, I know. And you can be too. So say it with me. Katya is dead! 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 Therapy? This is wrong. What's wrong, Dr. Marlowe? We're just trying to take care of ourselves. This is not what self-care looks like. I'm a mental health professional. It's my job to take care of you. So, you're gonna take care of us? Because it's your... Wait, what is Mr. Stevens doing? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Everybody out. I need to speak to Casey alone. <laughs> what? Clark! Natalie! Why did you do that? You were being self-destructive. Yeah, but I was having fun, too. Casey, I don't know what you think you're doing, but... Everything that the school doesn't want me to do! I'm not taking the test. I'm not going to class. Sleep. Drugs. Food. I'm taking care of you. It's my job to take care of you. You're lying. What? You're here to kill me. Why would you think that? Because it's true. No, it's not, Casey. That's your paranoia talking. We've been over this. You That's have to let you. told you to tell me. They told me to help you do better in school. They told me to get you back in line. Then why do you keep asking me about Katya? Hmm? Why do you keep asking me how I ruined Natalie? Why do you keep asking me to relive the worst traumas of my life? Because I'm a bad therapist! I'm a bad therapist, Casey. Fransdale didn't hire me because I'm good. Fransdale hired me because they knew no one else would. That's why I'm here, Casey, not to kill you. No one is trying to kill you. Yes, they are. Why would they do that? Because I'm destroying the school! Because I'm going crazy! You are not. You are a normal girl, Casey. A totally normal girl. In fact, everyone at this fucking school is exceedingly ordinary. It's Fransdale's conditions that are so... That's what's crazy. It's not crazy to seek some relief after years of being tortured. It's not crazy to take off the seal and try to heal a little. They brought me here to make you better, right? Well, here's my diagnosis. You are not only completely sane, you are also completely average. 
You're normal, Casey. Aren't you happy? This is good news. No. Do you know why I came to Fransdale, Dr. Marlowe? No. Because I wanted to be a unicorn. Congratulations, Casey. You passed the test. What? You graduated early. Highest honors. You scored a 600 on the test like nothing we've seen before. I didn't go to the last administration of the test. I scored nothing near a 600. Well, you have to take into account the curve. There is no curve. <laughs> well, if you look into the student handbook, it clearly states that for certain exceptional students, there is a curve. May I see a copy of the student handbook? No. Why? The student handbook clearly states that I do not have to show you the student handbook. How is anyone supposed to follow the rules if we don't know what they are? How can you punish people for breaking the rules if they know how to avoid it? What? <laughs> Casey, I am trying to do something nice for you. You're making it very difficult for me. What do you mean? You can go. You're done here. You can go back to your parents and never have to think about this place ever again. There's a catch, isn't there? There's always a catch. What do you want from me? You're gonna go out there and tell people the incredible experience you had here at Fransdale. You're gonna go to schools talking, telling students about the bright future they have ahead of them. You'll contact parents asking for donations. You're gonna take the name of Fransdale and plaster it across the country as you make your flourishing career. You're gonna be making out there in the world and attribute everything to us. I can't do that. I can't lie to people like that. Can't or won't? You paid for me to lose the one thing that I had going for me. My mind. There's no way I'd say one good thing about you. You'd come out a hero! To the rest of the students, I'd be a traitor. <laughs> if I offered this deal to any other student, don't you think they'd take it? Sure, they complain about corporal punishment or that the living conditions were too inhumane. But given the chance to have a future, don't you think any of them would take it in a heartbeat? No. <laughs> Annie would sacrifice for you. Clark would be sacrificed for you. Connie was so- Don't you talk about Katya! Why? You want to end up like her? She's still living with me. She's dead. She's still living with me. Uh, you saw her. She threw herself from the bell tower. She looked like a drop puppet with her arms She's off. still my roommate! Casey, if you care so much about Katya, why don't you listen to her? What do you mean? We found this in your room. You've been going through my room? <laughs> of course we have. Now don't go thinking you're special. We go through everyone's room. We let Arnold keep his cigarettes and alcohol because it throws everyone off trails. It's the real contraband items like poetry books and diaries that we're looking for. And yes, in case you're wondering, I have read Arnold's poetry. And yes, it is terrible. We were going around your room and we found this gem. Why don't you listen to her? All right, it's a deal. Really? I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for her. She never cared about you. She wrote me this. The headmistress will be so pleased. Oh, I'm sure she will. Casey, you better come. What's going on? I tried talking to her. She wouldn't. Wait, you know, wait. Natalie, you better come. Uh, hey, Lieutenant Natalie, what are you doing? I'm burning my work. Oh, man. Why? Because I'm destroying the school. And plus, I like to watch the flames. That's why I set a fire in every building on this campus. You did what? I set a fire in every building. Why? Isn't this what you wanted? No! My school! Yes! It's burning! It would appear so! My school is burning! Which is really why we ought to know! If my school burns, I burn with it! Are you with me, Larkin? No, Mistress, please. Leave me. You! You did this! No, it's not yes, your I did! No, that's it's not my true! Fault. You don't know what you've done! Yes, I do! This school is not only near to my heart, it is. It is my heart! It pumps blood through my veins! That's not your blood, it's our blood! You make us bleed and you you drink it! Haven't you ever heard that unicorn blood makes you live forever? We're not unicorns! You are burning my heart! Good! Now! Natalie? Natalie! No. 
note something during the test. No talking during the test! No, the, the building is on fire! It's not on fire. If it, would, if it was, we would hear fire alarms. Uh, all fire alarms were disabled in case they proved to be a distraction during your studies. me and everyone already knows each other and... Oh, so that's why you're hiding. No! Oh. I, I told you, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Clork. What? My first day, the teacher, she called me Clork instead of Clark. Oh, well that's happened to me before. I've been called the wrong name on the first day. I don't care about the teacher calling me the wrong name. It's the students started calling me Clark as well. They were laughing at me. Which is weird, because normally I like to make people laugh. It's just this felt different. It was like the joke was that I wasn't in on the joke. I swear, I've only been going here like three days, and it already feels like everyone's out to get me. That's not true. Feels like it is. I'm not out to get you. Really? No. What's wrong with you? No, I mean, why are you here in the infirmary? Oh, it's not that big of a deal. I probably shouldn't even be here. Really? Because it kind of looks like you're dying. <laughs> no, I just have a headache. And a stomach ache. And some body pain. But everywhere in my body. And I've started hallucinating a little bit. But only to the point where I space out for a few minutes and forget what I was saying. I think... I think I vomited this morning. But I can't remember. Oh, what I have a headache. <laughs> yeah, you are dying. I just need some ibuprofen. You need to sleep for like a week. I can't. I have work to do. Yeah, but do you really? Yes. You don't know what it's like here. You haven't started classes yet. You don't know what it's like to chill. Is there a nurse coming? Probably not, seeing that she's asleep on the bed over there. She can do that? Sleep on duty? No, but no one's come to get her for like three days and, you know. Is she dead? She just snores, so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, once the clonopin wears off, she'll get right back to work. And what is her work? Nothing. <laughs> she does literally nothing all day. Actually, she gave me this. Do you want one? I don't know if that'd be so good for my stomach. Oh yeah, I forgot. I can see the ibuprofen. It's just on that shelf over there. So take it. I can't. Why not? Because that's stealing. If she were awake, she'd give it to you. If, yeah, but she's not awake. And plus, it's not like taking a pencil or something. I'd be stealing drugs. I'd be stealing drugs. That's like a federal crime. <laughs> It's ibuprofen. <laughs> I can't take it. It's against the rules. Why can't you break the rules? It just feels wrong. What if I give it to you? I don't know. Come on, then I'd be the one stealing it. It still feels wrong. I'll be your drug dealer. 
Don't say that. That makes it worse. You need that. Take that. Please. The France Dell Institute was tragically burned to the ground. The little girl was found shot dead inside. We know you're the arsonist. We have the confession. And I have the gun that proves the headmistress killed Natalie. You're going to be 18. You're going to go to jail. So will the headmistress. But what if the fire started by accident? An oil kitchen in the fire, an oil fire in the kitchen, let's say, burned your little friend. Natalie! Murdered! The same day in a completely unrelated incident. And you were so traumatized by the event that despite your love, for this institution, we were forced to graduate early. The headmistress will face the consequences for her murder. What happened to her deal? The deal is off. But she did nothing. Clark, who was so desperately in love with you, was jealous of the time that you spent with that little friend Natalie and shot her dead in a blind rage. That's not true. I saw the headmistress shoot her myself. I'll testify against you. You have no proof. Except a confession. Casey. Casey, I'm sorry. You're covering for them? They said they let me out a year early. And I can go to whatever college I want. Yeah, after you go to jail. But only for a few months. And they then... said they can get me a plea deal. And then what? Huh? What college are you going to? Did you sell me out for Oxford or something? Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's. Oh. <laughs> you sure you don't want to pick Oxford? <laughs> It's where all my friends are, from back home. I just want to feel free again. So you're going to go to jail for a crime you didn't commit. Well, when you put it that way... I know you! I know what you believe in. Now, that was before Natalie burnt the whole fucking school down, Casey. It's better if we just stop fighting. He's right. I have people who back me up. And he knows Dead. That... What? Died in the fire. Arnold! Died in the fire. But Mr. Stevens, who am I kidding? He also died in the fire. Good riddance, never liked the man. Anyway, everyone in that test administration room burned. Yeah, that's because you locked the fucking door! Well, maybe if they tried harder on their test scores, they wouldn't be in that situation. And the headmistress? Why? Do you want her dead? No. No, of course not. I never wanted anyone to die. I just. I want to know. She's gone. On where? After your little row with her, you pushed her beneath the waters, beneath the bell tower. And? Oh, that's it. She didn't survive? She never learned how to swim. <laughs> and what about Dr. Marlowe? Who? Dr. Marlowe, my therapist. <laughs> Casey, surely you know that the therapy program at Fred's Law has been dead for years. You hired me a special therapist to get me to kill myself. Well, if we did that, she must not have been a good therapist, because... Here you are! And Fredville only allows the best. She was trying to open the door to the testing room. And? What are you going to tell Natalie's parents? Oh, you're going to love this. Natalie's parents? Also dead! They died a month after she arrived here. Car crash! You're joking. Though I am known as the Southeast Jokester, this is not one of my comedic moments. <sighs> What about Natalie's brother? Was Nat he in the crash? Natalie's had a brother. Yes, and she- Well, anyways, I don't have the patience for this. As you can see, none of this was Franz Dell's fault. You all chose to go here. But you kept us here. No, we didn't. But you said- <laughs> You could always swim away. This school is on an island on a lake, Casey. This is a lake. <laughs> so you could have always gone to the hospital that's just east, or the amusement park that's just west. But you never did, did you? Because you wanted to be here. That's not true. You kept us. <laughs> no. There was something keeping you here. All of you here. So it wasn't really Francis's fault now, was it? Yes, it was! You made us suffer on purpose! Perhaps we made things a little hard for you. But if you went to another school, a normal school, don't you think you would have done things that, to torture yourself instead? At least here we made the work, we did the work for you. Why? Well, At least here we saved the trouble of doing it for you, Clark. At least- oh, Clark! Yes, sir. Convince her. You have ten minutes. Clark! Casey! 
They're making this so easy for you. I'm not doing anything to help the people who murdered Natalie. Think of the things they can do for you. What are you doing? I'm taking Katya's advice. I'm getting out while I can. So should you. That's what the note said. Casey, don't, don't. It's not for me. It's for you. Look, here's the plan. You go along with everything that they say. Do whatever they want. You get into that school and you see your friends again. And once you're happy, once you're finally happy, reveal you have this. The gun that proves the headmistress killed Natalie. Take it. Please. No. Clark, what happened to you? You literally made these people eat your cum when I was too afraid to do anything. And now you've given up? It was you and me from the beginning. No, Casey. It was never you and me. What? Where were you when I was dressed as a worm or a unicorn? Uh, Where were you when I was polishing shoes? Where were you when I was a fucking table? I'm done playing. When you realized you could play hospital like a little kid, then I suddenly became interesting. But I'm not playing anymore. I'm getting out of here. Where will you go? Rome. Casey, you're not leaving this island. Forget about the country. Do you know what kind of power Fransdale has? If you don't cooperate, they will track you down like a wanted criminal. We don't know if any of that is true. I'll build a boat. I'll swim if I have to. I'm going to row. Why? Because there's a little boy I need to find. He needs a sister. Casey, whatever you're planning, it's not going to work. You have a wonderful opportunity here. So take it for fuck's sake. All right. I will. Fuck. Tell them I overpowered you. Tell them you saw the crazed look in my eyes and you knew that I couldn't be stopped. Tell them they better not come looking for me. Oh. And give them this. Tell them it's a graduation present.